It's not a real cry. It's my eyes are watering. Can you be comfortable enough to let me tell a story <laughs> without feeling like I'm attacking your masculinity? I'm not saying anything. You calling me a bitch, bro? <laughs> Welcome back to New Heights, ladies and gentlemen, a Jukes original show presented by Wave Sports and Entertainment. This is a show where one of us pretends to be a very humble 6-0, and uh, the other one is in misery because he, he can't find a way to, to fucking win a game. Calm down, calm down. Um, sorry. Turn. All right. Uh, we are your hosts. I'm Travis Kelsey. This is my big brother, Jason Kelsey. Um, new episodes come out every Wednesday. Uh, don't forget to subscribe on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts. And definitely follow the show on social media at New Heights Show. Jason, what do we got coming up, brother? Yeah, we got a great episode, Trev. Yee-hee. Break down our week six games, talk about some of the biggest rivalries of our careers, mm. and maybe even get into some uh, trade rumors. But first, as always, new news. New news. <laughs> Still the number one podcast on Spotify yeah! for over an entire month. Well, All month, of, baby. You know, to be honest, as of this recording, we were dropped to number two. Uh, so let's get us back to number one by subscribing. All of you listeners have been fantastic. I'm uh, so appreciative of you guys checking all the clips out and enjoying this podcast. Uh, so yeah, rate, you subscribe. Let's do it. I was actually I was in Yankee Stadium for uh, the original Game Five, scheduled Game Five uh, that got postponed. So I didn't actually oh. see any baseball, but I was at the stadium, and there were a lot of Yankees fans or just New Yorkers that listen to the podcast or listen to the show. Whoa, they listen to New Heights. Yeah, they, yeah, they said they loved it. So I, sure. I, I, I was that was my first time really being in an atmosphere having a lot of people or a lot of um, people from another fan base say that they were listening to our our show, man. And that was that was extremely cool. I didn't know we were reaching uh, reaching that many people. We got some more fan art. A big Yeti sighting at the Chiefs game. There was a few. Sa- yeah, well, Sarah Owens made a big Yeti sign. Did you see this sign? I did. Thank yeah. you, Sarah. I was driving in, and Sarah was she was like in the middle of the road, saw me coming. You saw it in the, the middle. Wow. Okay. Yeah, yeah. She made sure that she that I was going to see it, and I appreciated it. It got me into the uh, into the um, what do you call it? The basketball. Every man for himself. I'm just happy we got your real nickname <laughs> out there. Big Yeti's here to stay, baby. All right. Big Yeti's got to get a win, man. We got a, well, yeah. We got a fan question from Tita2216. My question is for Travis. Uh Oh. What shenanigans did Travis get into in Philly in Jason's early years when the Cincy football season was all but wrapped up and he was coming to Philly to watch me play? Any funny stories from that time period? Honestly, I, uh, yeah, no, I, um, because once my season ended, I really went right into like draft, combine training, things like that. So I, I definitely came to Philly and uh, and enjoyed a few weeks, or at least a, a week out there, a few days out there. Well, my first season in the NFL, you were still a junior, correct? So if you came out at all, it would have been that year. But I don't. I mean, I guess you know when you're a college football player, you really don't get a downtime. You get two weeks after the season, and then you start like winter conditioning, basically. Yeah, you're right so, back into it. You know, I don't know that you really had time to really come out and visit me. I know you came to a couple games, but it wasn't a lot. Um, and then I the remember, second year. I remember coming to the uh, the apartment or the condo that you had down in, uh, was it Old Philly? City? Yeah. Was or, it? Uh, old City. Which one? Old, old City. The one Old City over there on Market. Yep. Yeah, so I remember fun. going to that one, and you, did, you had like three rooms. Yep. None of them had beds in them, but you had – a mattress you had like a mattress with That's a bed. uh what are you talking about chase that my mar- all right no bed frames you just had a mattress on the floor That's no sheets on it there were what sheets is the, on it. what's the hyper hyperbaric chamber there was a hyperbaric chamber in there you i know, was like you? this is what this guy does i was he rehabbing just... an acl injury trying everything i could i used it twice it was just sat in there <laughs> i didn't use it at all. Hyperbaric i was borrowing chamber. it i was borrowing it from todd airman's so. I, when I tell you, I was like, man, this dude's on some other stuff, man. I hope he's not juicing, man. This guy, 
He's he's going after come, it all. <laughs> I was trying to come back from the ACL. Somebody said it would help, and I got into it one time. I was like, I'm done with this. This is – I can get way better sleep. <laughs> Not in this – confined Listen, space everybody knows the best sleep you get is with a mattress on the ground in the <laughs> so that when you get out of it you have to do a, a sumo squat just to stand up again all right yeah i don't know there's not really any great stories no My one sp- one one outstanding story back to that okay. same apartment um guy like me haven't really seen a lot of money in one sitting. Like I had at least up to that point in my life, I hadn't seen a lot of like cash, like cold, hard cash, you know? And um, I guess you had just came back from Atlantic city or something because your entire like bathroom counter was full of just (laughs) Benjamins. And I was like, dang, this dude just casts checks. (laughs) <laughs> is this what this dude is doing? This is reckless, man. I want to play in the NFL. <laughs> yeah, no, that was, I think I, that is very accurate. I think it was just an AC trip that had just happened. Yeah. Ended out on top. <clears throat> yeah, and then um, I had the, uh, I had the uh, sticky hands, man. Sticky hands. I might've, I might've stole a little bit. I might've, I might've took a few hundreds from you, brother. That's all right. Appreciate you letting me get that. Ah, I bought Always. a few beers with it. <sighs> <laughs> All good. It was like a, it was like the community bin. <laughs> the community bin for Kelsey's. Yeah, I don't gamble often. I do not advise anyone out there to gamble. But if uh, you are going to gamble, make sure you win and let your brother have some. <laughs> <laughs> That's really about it, though. I didn't have any other stories other than that one. Yeah, I don't think that there's. I mean, you were so busy when you were still in college, and then uh, the time that you could have maybe done it before the draft. Even though you're busy then too, so there really is just not a lot of great yeah. opportunities. I remember uh, my first couple of years. Um, not a, not a lot of people knew who I was out in Philly. They might have knew of me because of you, but they didn't. They, they weren't able to like point me out or anything like that. So I remember just right. tailgating with the uh, with the Celix, having having a bunch of fun in the parking lot, man. Mm-hmm. Um, my first real tailgating experience because obviously we're always playing in the game, so it's like getting out there and 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 getting hammered before a game and going in there kind of feeling that atmosphere and everything build up. It was uh, definitely a cool experience. I, I appreciate Philly for giving me a, my um, my first taste of uh, that world. Yeah, I think my first tailgate was actually coming back to Cincinnati for one of your college games. Mm-hmm. You guys played Louisville, I think, at the NIP, and uh, that was my first tailgate I ever went to. Nice. So I guess that I'll is what, one. Cincinnati tailgates, too. Now, they'll tailgate for a high school game. Yeah, like no. like Muni League football. Like they're they're like, oh, football's being played today. Let's go tailgate. Cincinnati. The way Cincinnati works is they just look for any excuse to eat skyline chip. <laughs> Dude, do not. That's get all they me care started, about, man. Oh, do not hey, get me started. Reds on that. game. Reds game. Let's get some. <laughs> let's get some of that skyline dip. Two two o'clock. Can't, I, I can't even function right now. Let's go get some cheese cones from Skyline. <laughs> all they care about is Cincinnati chili, and everything revolves around that. Gold Star and Skyline, man. Shout out to both of them. I'll probably yeah. never touch it. I don't want to be brand fave. I don't want to. Never, I'll never touch be, it again, man. You'll I, never I touch it again? It. What, no, you're too dude, good for I'm Cincinnati out. chili? No. I, it's just that I'm, I don't have a taste for chili. Not a big chili guy. It's not never chili, was. Travis. It's Cincinnati chili. You're we right. We both know it's a, It's more of a spaghetti meat sauce. Uh, it's not it, a chili. It's, uh, I got it. I got to have it. Every time I go back, I get it. Every time. I'm sure they could probably just like send you all the microwave food that they make in there. It's probably made like by like an easy bake oven ba- in the back or something. I don't care how they make it; it's delicious. <laughs> I, I think uh, for some reason, all the food I eat when I go back to Cincinnati is all the food that I had at two to three in the morning coming out of the bars in college. You know it because at that point in your head, it's just so delicious, <clears throat> and it's ingrained in my head how good a skyline cheese coney is. So. I will yeah, say this: you you forced me to to actually try Skyline Chili. Yeah, wasn't wasn't a fan of it. Shout out to Skyline. I don't want to you know hate on yeah. anybody. It's right. Wasn't hey, for it's me. Not for everybody. You forced me to try sushi. Loved yeah. it. Loved yeah. it. Yeah. Opened up a whole new world for me. So I appreciate that, man. Trav is. I was one of absolutely the, hammered. 
I guess we should say Travis is one of the pickiest eaters. I was. I was. I both. I've, 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 was? Yes. Travis, you don't eat white sauces. How is that? How is that? You've, do you what know do you mean? A many, lot of people don't eat, don't eat white sauces. There are not a lot of people that are color specific on their sauces. Okay. <laughs> Some people don't like mayonnaise. Some people don't like horseradish. I hate, Some hate people them both. don't like ketchup. You hate just both. disqualified an entire no, group. I'll, do, I'll eat some Alfredo. That's not a sauce, but yeah. So you'll eat Alfredo. <laughs> mayonnaise is a sauce? I guess it's a sauce. It's, it's, uh, yeah. All right. That's fine. All right. Whatever. Anyways, Travis is really picky at eating. For I a long was. Time. Get out of here. I, I, I will, right now, I will probably try the majority of things that get put in front of me. Travis, you took me to a restaurant in Los Angeles. Okay. This man took me to a restaurant. <laughs> the it Lady and the Goat. It was called Lady and the Goat. <laughs> And didn't eat a single thing right, because it was all goat. Stuff, I'm like, yeah. dude, how are you going to take me to a place oh, that man. says has goat in the rest in the name? I didn't. I, I then mean, eat none of the goat. Like, what are you doing making that reservation? <laughs> I didn't make it. This dude, this man went to this very nice restaurant, said no to everything, and then went to In and Out immediately after. <laughs> I mean, all right now. God, I love a good right. burger. You're ridiculous. All what right, can I say, let's get this show going. Come on. As an NFL lineman, two things are incredibly important to me in season, which is why I'm excited to partner with HelloFresh. With HelloFresh, you get farm fresh, pre-portioned ingredients, and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. With HelloFresh, ingredients travel from the farm to your doorstep in less than seven days. So you know they're fresh. Plus, pre-portioned ingredients make cooking a snap and cut down on food waste. Have a packed fall calendar like me? HelloFresh's quick and easy meals like their 20-minute recipes mean you'll spend less time in the kitchen and more time with your loved ones. Personally, I love how simple they make cooking. Have you ever gotten ready to cook dinner and find out you're missing one small ingredient? So now you got to stop what you're doing. Go to the store, find the turmeric or whatever, and then come back and cook. HelloFresh cuts out that entire trip to the store. So go to HelloFresh.com slash Heights65 and use code Heights65 for 65% off plus free shipping. Again, that's HelloFresh.com slash Heights65 and use our code Heights65 for 65% off plus free shipping. These days, no matter if you're a small business or an NFL franchise, every new potential hire can feel incredibly stressful. In my career, I've been lucky enough to work with some of the best in the business. But before you can work with the best, you need to find the best. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the right people for your team faster and for free. LinkedIn Jobs makes it so easy with simple tools like screening questions that make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and hire. The year's almost over. If you're looking to finish strong, you're going to need the right people on your team. So use LinkedIn Jobs to help you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash new heights. That's linkedin.com slash new heights to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Teeing up 12 bold topics, baby. Uh, starting off with both of our games, um, this is how we do it. I always tee up uh, topics on Jason, Jason's game, uh, and he does the exact same for mine. Uh, Eagles 26, Cowboys 17. Yeah, how baby. about it, man? 6-0. and oh. The birds are flying over there, man. Feels good. Um, playing against Micah Parsons. Talk to me, man. Well, we didn't just play Micah Parsons. He was definitely uh, one of the players on the field. Um, yeah, Micah, uh, you know, Marcus Lawrence, you know, yeah. uh, Dante Fowler. Oh, nice. Osa, Fowler's up there. I mean, dude, they're – yeah, man. These guys are um, – these guys are so good in every facet, especially on defense. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, they think they were the number two or number one ranked defense in the NFL going into last week, and it was apparent on film. You know, we knew we had – uh, a battle in store. Dan Quinn has those guys doing some unbelievable things, playing hard. Uh, they are a really, really good football team. So 
Um, you know, we, we really had to dial in this week to try and hold back their playmakers from making plays. And, um, you know, they still made some plays. I mean, they're good players, but, um, you know, definitely happy to come out of that one with a win. You already know, man, the rivalry is real. The rivalry is, is. real. Um, even with Cooper Rush back there, man, that team is, you know, they always get fired up to play against you guys. Time out. We talked about which game deserved the primetime slot last week between this one and the your guys' bills, right? Yeah. I our just game saw was this. way more entertaining. Well, how about this? The uh, Sunday night matchup between Dallas and the Eagles from this past week was the highest – Commercialized in seven Com- years. Commercialized. Dallas. It's the highest Dallas audience has, in seven years. Dallas probably has the most fans. What do you if mean you, probably? They definitely have the most fans. Well, then what are we even talking about? This isn't the only time they played on Sunday night in the last seven You're years. You're right. It's, 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 it's against their biggest rival. So, I mean, yeah, yeah. it was it was a highly anticipated game. Saying, I'll give you that. Clearly, you that. clearly, America wanted to see Eagles versus Cowboys. <laughs> well, America's team. Just saying. Yeah. Makes sense. I all don't right, think it whatever. had anything to do with. Get back right. to your. Get back to your question. <laughs> was the atmosphere as crazy as it as it as it looked like on on TV? I mean, it I looked like I it was, was on rocking the field, in there. Travis, how would I know? Do you, you feel it? You feel it? Was it was it was there more to this game? Is what I'm asking you. I mean, than, the crowd was previous. definitely into it. Crowd was definitely into it. Uh, there were a lot of uh, obviously Eagles fans in attendance. Uh, there are a lot of celebrities in attendance from. Uh, Joel Embiid. Actually, I met Joel Embiid down on the field. I, th- I get, found out after the game that all the Sixers were there, I think. Nice. Um, you know, Meek Mill came out, was doing the Dreams and Nightmares from the Super Bowl run era on the field. Uh, saw DJ Jazzy Jeff down on the sideline. Every, every. From, uh, yeah, a little Fresh Prince. Know. Uh, uh, you know, I think. Um, Philly legend. Yeah. Jill Biden was there. Dr. Jill Biden. The, okay, uh, now. What is it? Is that uh, Flotus? Flotus, I think that's how. It's a first lady of the United States. Okay. Oh, okay. Anyways. Nice. Nice. Yeah. yeah. I see what you did there. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't do that. I think that's like a thing, but, uh, so <laughs> anyways, atmosphere was electric. There was tons of, uh, energy on the field and, uh, it made a difference. The defense came up big, three turnovers, played an incredible game for the most part. Um, and, uh, yeah, it was an outstanding game. What gets you, what gets you fired up more? Cause I've been in the link a bunch of times. Yeah. Do you get fired up for the cheers more, or do you get fired up when they just start boo? They just start booing anything that they don't like, whether it's the refs or a bad call, or you know, you guys just aren't performing. What well, gets you more fired up? Because I I, lo- I love a good boo, man. A a, a good boo. Yeah. It's just a whole different world. You know what I mean? It yeah, makes it more. It makes it more of a dramatic. Well, who are they booing? They're booing the refs. Well, I mean, I mean, they're they're Philly fans, so they could be booing you. That's what I'm saying. Like, listen, boos. But that, are probably, does that get you fired up? I mean, dude, do you know how many times I've been booed in Philadelphia? Like, I don't. That's like a rite of passage. <laughs> I told actually, get this, Jill, Doctor Biden was booed with a bunch of cancer survivors starting the game. Time out. Yeah. Time. Listen, nobody is exempt from an authentic Philadelphia welcome. When you come to the link, if you're not a Philadelphia, you get booed. Now, she, she, I think they are, they do live in Delaware, and that kind of counts as part of the Philadelphia community. But, you know, I got to ask her after the coin toss how it felt to have an authentic Philadelphia welcome. <laughs> what, did, what did Dr. Biden say? She didn't say it. She was not listening to what I was saying. <laughs> she just laughed and went along her day. She's focused on improving public education in our country. She doesn't give a crap about what 62 on the Eagles <laughs> says to her <laughs> rightfully uh, so keep anyways keep, keep doing so your thing if, Flotus. let's get back to the booze all right so the booze um you know i don't know i i think booze uh are 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 good i don't really notice cheers when i'm playing to be honest with you i don't know uh, if that's just me but when i'm on the field and playing i'm not noticing the crowd that much that's what so I'm what saying. i really what i love is third downs watching our defense out there when the crowd is loud, when the mm-hmm. defense is out there, because I know offensively how big of a difference that makes yeah. uh, with communication at the line, uh, the snap count, like all of these different things. And um, hearing loud cheers that lead to procedural issues from the opposing team 
Gotta love I'm it. I'm all about that. Call me a nerd. I love some good opposing team procedural issues from the fan <laughs> crowd. <laughs> That's what gets me jazzed. You get the quarterback right here? Yeah. Yeah. Say it again. I can't hear it. Speaking of procedural issues, I, we had our own procedural issue. Mike Chirico actually shouted us out after this. Shout out the podcast. Thanks for the shout out. Shout Mike. out Mike, um, man. Yeah, we. Uh, I snapped the ball when I wasn't supposed to snap the ball. Almost in a critical situation. I mean, we're only up nine. Are we in silent count? We're not in silent. We're at home, Travis. We're so not then, in what? Are, count. Where, did you hear something? There was like you know, Jalen was going to check the play. There was <laughs> some communication going on, and I'm. It's third down. It's third down and seven. So I'm trying to get off the ball and pass block. Yeah. And I knew it mid snap. Like as I'm snapping the ball, I feel that this is not. And I'm supposed <laughs> to be snapping the ball. What I should have done was just aid it and take the five yard uh, false you start. You gotta love it when time freezes, man. What I should have uh, done is just held it and taken the five yard false start. But I actually snapped it. And if you watch the clip, I don't even try to block anybody. I turn around <laughs> and get on the ball. I recovered it. <laughs> it's not funny. It's actually terrible. This, this is the second a, time this has this happened guy's this year. Guys, patent stats, man. Fumble recovery, man. Good for you. It's, it's the second time it's happened this year. Freaking, I think. Uh, uh, what's his I'm name? Interested. Um, I'm, now I'm interested. Do, does Jalen get hit with that fumble, or do you get hit with that fumble? Well, now that I've just announced that I wasn't supposed to snap the ball, they'll probably put it on me. But um, I don't know. I think sure. I, I have no idea how that works. Probably Jalen, unfortunately. Which, sorry, Jalen, I didn't mean for that to happen. That's happened twice now at home. We usually have less issues like that with with silent count because uh, I don't know. It's just more like. There's less room for kind of going off the cuff like that. Like what ended up happening is we're in the middle of the count and then he wanted to audible the uh, route oh, yeah. to one of the receivers. So like you're kind of rolling into it, expecting the count to happen. And then all of a sudden it's like, Oh, that isn't the count. That's a oh, check. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. I don't know. Not ideal. We got to clean that up. Obviously I got to <laughs> clean that up, but uh, right it was a nice little shout out from uh Tariko. Thanks Mike Tariko, My guy, man. You want to talk about a stud. That guy, any big time event, that guy's doing it. He's really? an absolute legend. You know it, man. He's, he's a workhorse like that. You know it. I respect anybody that, you know, they take their job uh seriously and they work at it. He's you know I mean? I effortless. Might... He's absolutely yeah. effortless, man. I love it. So genuine. The dude kills it. Yeah. He's been killing it though. Thanks for the thanks for the shout out. And of course it did make the show. There we go. Uh, had that tussle with the, uh, with the D tackle. Osa, uh, 97 for the Cowboys. Mm -hmm. He's actually a really, really good player. Um, yeah, he is. This is in his second year. Uh, just you know, battling in the trenches, man. Well, it's, it's late in the game. Obviously the Cowboys are frustrated. We just had a big drive. And at this point, the game is not over, but it's, you know, at that point where if we get a first down, it's over. And we had a play before that where, uh, I think I kind of finished it a little bit longer and then he got tried to grab my leg. So I'm like, I'm definitely <laughs> finishing this next play. <laughs> You're going to start. And, you you yeah, poke so the I, bear, man. You poke the well, bear. Well, I'm not, not like that. I'm just like, okay, we're doing this. And then, uh, <laughs> <laughs> we're doing this. <laughs> yeah, it's whatever. Pushed him over. And then it pushed him over a pile. And, uh, and then I got my second WWE, uh, wrestling move on me. I'm thinking, <laughs> Now, at some point, the NFL switched over into the World Wrestling Federation, but um, Super no, it was uh, hip tosses, man. I found this after, found this out afterward. I guess he's like a three-time state champion wrestler, um, and it was a textbook double leg takedown. I mean, it was a spear that Bill Goldberg would have been proud of. And uh, <laughs> you know, sometimes you just got to take out. You know, listen, it's it's a it's a game of high energy. We're battling all game. I got a ton of respect for him and their defense. No matter what happened, I don't take stuff personal at all. And you um, can't, man. You can't. And uh, it was a great double leg takedown. He got to let out some of his, uh, uh, you know, frustration, and uh, we got a fifteen yard penalty, and the game was over. So I'll take it, and I'm sure he uh, was happy to <laughs> slam me on the ground. Shout out to Osa, man. Nick Sirianni is maybe the perfect Philly coach. Yeah. After the spine buster, man, he was uh, throw him out of the game. 
maybe threw a few w- other words in there. Um, Potentially, but yeah. he was uh, he was yelling at the other sideline, man. I honestly, I did not expect that. I didn't see that. I don't know if the uh, the Philly cultures just getting it out of him or how good his team is. You know, he's he's here and he wants to show he's fighting for for the city too. I don't know, man. But I uh, I definitely didn't see that out of Coach Sirianni, man. Then you haven't been watching too many games. Nick is one of the most passionate. Really? Dude, he's screaming at the officials on like all last season. Nick is one of the most uh, passionate and energetic coaches I've seen on the sideline. You know, obviously at that point in the game, game's pretty much over. I think he was upset. So he's telling the officials what to do. But um, yeah, not out of the ordinary. And I do think he fits Philadelphia extremely well because he's not, he's like a no bullshit coach. You know, I think he got criticized a lot when he was doing his first press conference. He's just kind of like authentically him. Loves football, like loves competing, loves talking trash. I mean, he's Mm -hmm. a guy that I think really does fit the Philadelphia personality really, really well. And as we become successful on the field, you know, Philadelphia has fallen in love with this guy. And I only Mm -hmm. anticipate that to grow. Um, You know, he is a... A uh, competitor through and through. In some ways, he's an underdog in the way he was hired and where he came from. Um, freaking played at Mount Union, so he's got some Ohio ties to him. Let's go, baby! So you know, I think uh, he fits in really, really well with the Eagles fan base. I think, and they're just going to continue to fall in love with that guy. Shout out to the old ball coach, baby. The start streak. And game day oh, fits, a hundred and twenty eight consecutive regular season starts, man. Yeah, we can't keep talking about that. We gotta skip. skip yeah, <laughs> he's only third, I'm, so it doesn't even matter yet. We'll talk I'm, about it when you're number one. I'm not gonna get number one, but uh, <clears throat> the uh, I'm a little superstitious about uh, talking about consecutive starts or streaks like that. Um, I feel like whenever you start talking about it, it for sure something happens. Yeah, no. Dude, I think I that happened it. with uh, Mitchell Schwartz the year Dude. he. Uh, he was playing in Cleveland and in and in Kansas City with me, and I think the year that we started talking about how many games he had played back to back to back like that uh, goes down. Unfortunately, he went down. Yeah, dude, happened. Uh, John Dornbos, the day he tied the record with Harold Carmichael for the most starts or most games in Eagles history, got hurt. Never played a game again in Eagles history. Yeah. All right. Well, let's stop talking. They announced about it. it on the field. Dude. Like just wait the next game. Yeah, Don't tell, say tell it. the tell tell the Eagles whoever's whoever's announcing stuff at the I game. I keep telling tell people to, to just, stop bringing it up, but they right. just continue to bring it up. So, Eagles social team gave us a look at Jason's game day fit. Yeah, shocker, Jason's game day fit is the same fit he wears every day. What the fuck? This guy's game about day game ready, day baby. Fit? This guy's Since, game day ready. Listen, some people go to play football and some people play dress up. Okay, I don't like to play dress up. I like to play football. All right, I'm not gonna go shopping, color coordinating, getting belts and shoes and all this shit just to go play football. I don't get it for a fucking second. What is the point? I don't get it. I hear you. you I know. Okay, maybe my, you can explain it to my me. Game day, my game, my game day fit it. is my regular day fit too. Get so I know exactly Travis, what you're talking about, Travis. What? Your game day fit is your everyday fit. Would yes. you ever in a million years wear the shirt you have on right now to a Kansas City game? No. Exactly. Because it's an Eagle. It's an Eagles shirt. It's a t shirt. You don't wear regular t Travis. What do you mean? I wore a beater yet. All right. We're gonna Sunday. have to pull it. I wore a beater on Sunday. You, what you pulled the Aaron Rodgers? No, no. no the Nicholas Cage? <laughs> I threw a sweater on over it, but Travis, you have not worn anything under a hundred dollars to a to a game. Your flip flops were more than a hundred dollars. Those <laughs> <laughs> they got can openers on the bottom. Are you kidding me? It's two for one special. <laughs> All about function. Listen, I don't get why I really don't understand the whole fit thing. I don't understand uh, the concept. People like to look. They like the, people like to look good going to the game. What's wrong with that? There's nothing wrong with it. I didn't say there's anything wrong with it. I just said I don't understand it. All right, that's fair. I mean, I kind of. I like. I like to have fun. As I'm getting older, I kind of get it. There's something about what you wear being a representation of you and your values. But well, I, I feel like more so when I when I feel like I throw on something that I that I you know I 
feel like I look good or I, I enjoy, you know, what I'm expressing. Like it, it yeah. juices me up a little bit. It makes me feel more confident. It makes me feel like, uh, you know what I mean? I'm about to go do some damage. Listen, you could throw a pink tube top on me. I'm still going to look good, baby. Right I don't now. care what I got on. All right now. Got to see it. <laughs> got to see it. If you saw what I wore, what did you think of? What, what would you rate my fit? Did you see it? Uh, yes, I did see it. Um, honestly, what was it? It was, what a, it was. It was a solid two. A solid two. Because two out of two? Two out of ten. <laughs> <laughs> Shit was fucking buns, man. You didn't even have, like, when it's that cold out and you see a guy wearing flip-flops, you're just asking a man, who is he about to kill next? That dude is a is a psychopath. What do you why why do you just wear flip flops everywhere? It wasn't cold. It wasn't huh? cold. It wasn't, it wasn't cold. cold? Uh, I no, guess it was like just the gloomy. Degrees. It must it must it, it's cold in Kansas City right now. It's uh, like four. It's like forty fifty. So when I guess when I saw the picture, I just assumed that it's cold. It's up chillier there today. East Coast. It wasn't cold. I had a t shirt on. Jason, you like you said, you wear that every day, anyways. If it's cold or not, you're wearing that. I don't. Listen, you don't know this, but when you have a really fat gut, it is hard to put socks on. So I just wear flip-flops. <laughs> My thighs and gut make it uncomfortable to put socks and shoes on. So I said, fuck it. I'm just going to wear flip-flops. <laughs> uh, fat Batman. Yeah. Once Strikes once I get again. done playing, lose some weight, maybe I'll go back to putting socks you're and shoes You're not going to lose weight when you're done playing. Stop it. We'll, we'll see. Stop it. What are you going to go run? No. What are you going to eat healthier? Eating. You're going to stop eating? As much as I do, yeah. Jason, there's what? no way. There's no way you stop going down to the deli. All right, mark it. We got a year a year out. We'll mark it. If this is the last one, we'll see where I'm at in a year from, from today, from this I'm gonna conversation. Say you, I'm going to say you got a few more in you. Jason, three reasons the Eagles are 6-0. and oh. Give them to me. Well, um... The number one reason has got to be the turnover differential. Uh, right now we're plus 12, which is the highest since any team in the NFL through six games since uh, 2012. The Chicago Bears were uh, the next ah, closest Bears. team. The next closest team this year is plus four. So, you know, if there's one stat that, you know, turnovers dictates wins and losses, one. turnovers are the number one. Um, we have 14 takeaways by the defense, so they've done an unbelievable job. And we've only turned the ball over twice, which leads me to my second reason we're still undefeated, and that's Jalen Hurts. Um, we all know how important the quarterback position is. Ron Jaylen Rivera told us. <laughs> Jalen was under – has been under enormous cr scrutiny really his whole career. Oh, yeah. And uh, everybody's wondering whether he's the right guy for the job, all this criticism. And he's been lights out, man. Um, not only has he been pretty much near the top in every uh, statistic throwing the ball-wise, uh, so he's improved as a passer. Mm -hmm. uh, he's also up there in rushing yards, which opens up a lot of things in our run game and our offense. Right. And we just talked about it. He's only turned the ball over twice. It's hard. It is really hard to be a playmaker, a reason you win the game, and also be a game manager. In my opinion, that's what separates the best quarterbacks in this 100%. league. 100%. Yeah. You have to be – not only can you be a guy that is making plays that others can't, you also have to be smart enough and composed enough to manage the game and do the right – and make the right decisions. And right now he's been unbelievable in both of those categories. And, uh, and the third reason is um, we're playing our best football at, at crucial points in the game. Mm -hmm. um, I uh, I'll never forget playing high school hockey at Cleveland Heights. Our, our head coach, Kirk Gunther, Kirk, uh, Kirk Gunther told me the most important parts of the game and the most important parts of periods are how you start a period and how you finish a period. So far this year, we have started games lights out. Mm -hmm. We've led every game at halftime. We have more second quarter points than a lot of teams have points scored in general. Um, and then in crucial points in the game in the fourth quarter, when we've needed a drive against the Cowboys, against the Cardinals, and against the Lions, we've been able to run the ball 
and ice the game and finish it out strong. Um, if you're playing good football at the end and at the start, you know, th- that's, that's kind of when you that's need to pretty be good doing indicator, it. man. Yeah. 100%. Now we haven't done it. We haven't done a two minute drive yet. We haven't had to put that two minute fourth quarter drive up, which I'm looking forward to, you know, at some point we're going to need to do that. But you know, so far, uh, those are my reasons. I think why we're three and oh, or six and oh, three reasons why we're six and oh. All right, now trying to get the seven and oh, baby. We got a bye week this week. All Looking right. forward to that. All right. All righty. Well, I guess we can start talking about your game. Yeah, man. Do you want to? Yeah, I could talk. A, I could talk a little bit about it, man. All right. Well, the Bills are a good team. Chiefs. Man. The Bills are a very good team. That's an understatement. The Chiefs lose second of the season, twenty to twenty-four, against the Bills. Yeah, let's talk about it. You guys are pretty much. Are you guys a rivalry now? Is it official? What did it feel like in the game? It felt. It felt like it was. There was a little bit more to it. I think that uh, a lot of hype into into the game. On top of that, um, familiar with the guys across the ball. Whenever I feel like I play guys that I'm familiar with, it just it's a whole different game. It's more of a chess yeah. match. It's yeah. more of uh, what is this guy's technique? You know what I mean? Instead of just going out there and just and and playing fast, you're you're thinking of more. Um, more things without a doubt. And, uh, number one offense, no, number one scoring offense versus the number one uh, scoring defense in the league, uh, in the Bills defense and our offense. Um, and uh, unfortunately, we only put up 20 points, man. We got to be able to find ways to keep putting up touchdowns. Um, field goals aren't going to win it against a team like that. A guy like Josh Allen, you know what I mean? He's a he's an absolute stud, can do it, can, you know, beat you in a lot of different ways. They got a creative offense. Uh, Stephon Diggs, can't say enough about that guy. Dawson Knox had a huge, huge touchdown at the end of the game with, with a great throw from Josh. But um, honestly, this one this one stings because of all the hype. And, uh, it, you know, you always want to play your best against the best. And um, it stings because we didn't play our best. We uh, we, we handed it to them in a, in a sense. Um, obviously, they're a great team. I don't want to say, you know, that's not knocking them at all. But it, when I look at the film... Um, I'm seeing a lot of things that we could have done uh, to help ourselves. Instead, we were hurting ourselves in, in a few different uh, facets of the game. And it's just, you know, uh, you just got to fix them. You got to you got to be you got to be your worst critic. You got to go into the film room and you have to you have to not point fingers at any direction, but right at yourself and just yeah. keep hacking away at it. Um, we're we were banged up in the secondary. Um, offensively, we. We didn't move the ball uh, early in the game as as much as we wanted to. Um, a few red zone opportunities came out empty handed. Got to be able to capitalize, even if it is three points. I was talking about touchdowns. Even if it is three points, find a way to to get points on the board early, um, and then just uh, finishing the game like we know how, man. Um, and it was just a, we knew we were going to be in a bar fight with those guys. Uh, Von Miller, a guy that. I got tremendous respect for um, had himself, had himself a day. Um, we know, but we knew that was the reason why they picked him up was to be able to get to Pat Mahomes. And um, yeah. we got to do a better job as a team, you know, putting him one-on-one with any tackle is a, is a probably a favorable matchup for Vaughn. Um, oh, I'm sure he'll take that. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's like doing, doing things that can help slow him down maybe the uh get the run game going more um mm-hmm. you know things like that to just kind of make them have to think about another thing yeah just um, don't let him pin his ears back exactly and it's uh and that was for the the entire defense you know we uh we came out thinking they were going to run a lot of shell like they have in years past and this year they went a little bit more man hole man uh man robber and yeah. um you know what that does is it sometimes makes Pat hold on to the bulb while we're in route trying to get open, yeah. and um, we got to be able to win our one-on-one matchups, and that's uh, that's where that accountability. At looking myself in the mirror and saying you got to be there for that guy one five back there and get yeah. open early, no matter what, no matter if they're holding you, they can't hold me. You know, sure. try and find ways to to even even when you know it's a it's not a favorable matchup. I'm getting bracketed or something like that. Find a way. You know, just yeah. just just keep being creative and 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 uh, you know accountable in that in that aspect. And it's uh this one uh this one would be a huge learning experience. Like I said, we were a little banged up. We had a lot of young guys uh, take strides. I think uh, there were a few plays that 
that, you know, a few of our young corners could have just, you know, stuck their tail between their legs and just kind of like kept it moving. No, they bowed up and actually played their tails off uh, for the rest of the game. And uh, that was great to see. Um, so we have new faces, a lot of young players, and uh, a big game like that is a huge learning experience, and it's a big confidence booster. When you look at it on the film and you see, you know, where you could have uh, been more accountable, and, uh, that's for sure. Yeah, I mean, I don't yeah. – you're, I feel you're making it seem like there's like a, dr- a very drastic thing. You guys lost to a really good football team, and both you and the Bills made uh, mistakes throughout the game. Um, it was a back and forth all game long, and it was a game that didn't disappoint, you know, very much like last year's playoff game. So, um, you know, I'm sure you guys will get some of these things corrected, but, um, you know, I still think, you know, that game could have gone either way. You guys were right there, and some that's probably why it hurts so bad because you guys know you had it. You could have won it. Yeah. And, um, you know, that's the reality of tight games and why they sometimes hurt worse than a good old ass kicking. Whenever you're whenever you're playing a really good football team, like an all around great football team, it's we talk about those big energy plays. you got to you got to keep making those plays throughout the game because you're not just going to get momentum and keep it right. That other team is fantastic, too. So they're going to find ways to build it up. Everything's magnified. Right. So it's like making making those big plays, you gotta re refocus your energy back to like, I need more. I need more. Yeah, or that, you know, Mahomes said that early interception in the end zone. I mean, not a bad throw or anything. I mean it's like a fifty fifty ball. Yeah. But you know, it's there was a fifty fifty ball two plays, three plays before that that I dropped. And um oh, really? everything's just more magnified. Yeah, it was back of the end zone cornerback made a great play on it um pat threw a back shoulder and uh, i tried to go late hands yeah, couldn't get my yeah. body all the way around um that would have been a once, good catch once it's in the hands though man i gotta have i gotta i gotta come down with that thing but those are the plays that are, they're, they mean so much like you have to make that play if you want to win those big time games against great teams you know, you know what i mean like oppor- yeah those opportunities are, are so limited and everything is magnified uh because you know the other team is going to find ways to make plays like that. So you got to make sure that you're accountable and you're you're going up there and making the spectacular catch and it's just uh you know that's where I got to I got to be be there for my guys, man. That one uh that one I'm not going to lie. I was sitting there just in my head about that for a, for a few plays. But um yeah. I mean that drive ended up with no points and uh that was after a I believe I don't know if it was a turnover or if it was a uh or if it was just a turnover on downs or whether they punted it, but they start off with the ball. Our defense stops them. We get the ball. Now we need to capitalize. You know what I mean? That situation right there is huge in games like that. Being able to, you know, stop stop a team out the gates and put up points first, knowing that you're going to get an extra possession going into the second half because you get the ball in the second half. Uh, it's yep. just, yeah, it's a uh, – like I said, learning experiences for for the for our, our team uh, in general, and um, yeah, you just gotta you gotta keep finding ways, man. That was a, that was a great team. It's a completely different feeling from the Colts game. Completely yeah. different feeling. I mean, shout out to the Colts; they got us. But that team was way more, I would say, not respected, but uh, just on paper, you knew it was a better team, and. Yeah. Um, we're not so. trashing on the Colts either. I mean, this no, not at let's all. Let's be honest. These you and you it's guys any and given Bills, Sunday, baby. Like you, well, no, you, you got to bring guys, it every time. You guys in the Bills are, uh, I think, we're ranked on most of the power rankings is one and two going into that game. I mean, I know we're undefeated, but you guys are in the AFC. The AFC is the conference that's loaded this year, and uh, you know, you guys, uh, you know, this was a, a heated matchup for that very reason. So, um, yeah. yeah. And guys can say whatever they want about the two picks or the turnovers and all that, but Pat Mahomes played his tail off. He was out there fighting, competing, running around, making crazy plays, crazy throws. I mean, watching the film, I just uh, it 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 fires me up when I see that dude play football um, the way he does, man. Because you could tell he's putting it all out there, and uh, sure. and that, and that just makes me want to be more accountable for the guy, man. Yeah. Get get one fives help them stay clean back there in the pocket and uh, and start making some plays downfield for them. Right. Well, speaking of Von Miller, we talked about him a little bit before. He had a good game, obviously, but 
uh, he issued an apology to you. Did you see this? What a kind, what a kind guy off the field, man. Do you, you know, know what I mean? He's, he's, a, he's an animal for? on the field. Um, sure. Yeah, first, I mean, he called me fake Gronk, uh, <laughs> head ass, <laughs> which was a hell of a response. I actually chuckled when I saw it. I was like, yeah, yeah. how can you not laugh at that? That's a good one. <laughs> but uh, over There's the years, some- over the years, we've 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 become uh, good friends or mutual friends, and. Uh, yeah. With uh, with a lot of guys throughout the league, um, my guy Char Kendrick West, shout out to Char Kendrick, but uh, he was good friends with him. I think that's where I started to like appreciate Von Moore was uh, through their relationship, um, and just watching him play football and seeing what he does off the field. Uh, yeah. Definitely a fun dude, man. Uh, and invited me on the podcast, so I'm definitely gonna have to jump on the podcast with him and Stefan Diggs, man. Uh, but first, you got to join ours, Von. Come on over, baby. Oh, dude. Um, all the respect in the world for that dude. Yeah, the uh, there's something about a good insult where it's like you can't even like get mad at it. It's just great. <laughs> you got to tell the one, man. Which one? I got the, a bunch. Which one? You got to tell the uh, the Miami um, the joint Miami practice one from one. this year, dude. This uh, it's dude. freaking uh, Phillips. Gotta, Phillips from my uh, ninety. Uh, the DN from outside linebacker Wilkins, right? No, no, no. It wasn't Wilkins. Wilkins was talking trash. Uh, just in the practice. That's what and I'm talking. That's I thought that was where he wasn't the one that said the line to me though. Uh, he was he was talking trash, and then I started yapping at him, which pretty big party foul by me because I wasn't able to you practice. practicing. Yeah, <laughs> and I'm over here talking to uh, trash to Christian Wilkins, and then uh, all of a sudden out of nowhere, Jalen Phillips says, "Shut up, eyebrows! You ain't even practicing." And I was like, "Dude, <laughs> this motherfucker just called me eyebrows." Like I can't even come back from that. Like, that, boy, that boy got some <laughs> thick ass eyebrows, man. Like the like the dad from American Pie. I mean, it's you know there ain't too many dudes got eyebrows like this. That thing's still connecting. No, I you know, I take care of it. You know, give it a little tweeze Keep every it once presentable. in a while. Yeah, oh boy, he won't go yeah, out if, and buy new clothes, man. But he'll he'll tw- he'll, <laughs> he'll tweak his eyebrows. I do I do enough to be presentable. Yeah, it's just manscaping, man. Good for you. Eyebrows. Right. That's his new nickname, everybody. Eyebrows. You got sexy right. Batman and eyebrows. I'm with it. Hey, I'm good with it. <laughs> a lot of people be uh, are jealous and not have eyebrows as luscious as this. How's it going, guys? Want to take a second to shout out one of our sponsors, Harry's Razors. Now, I might not be the first guy that comes to mind when you think about shaving and skincare, but let Jason Kelsey set the record straight. I know what a good razor does for your skin. And that's all thanks to our friends at Harry's who make it convenient and simple to keep up with my shaving and skincare routine, even in the middle of my hectic NFL schedule. So right now you can get Harry's starter set for just $3. Plus you'll get a free travel size body wash. The set includes a five blade razor, weighted handle, foaming shave gel, and a travel cover, a $16 value for just three. Just visit harrys.com slash new heights. A lot of shave companies want to sell you blades that vibrate, heat up, or some other gimmick. But with Harry's, you have everything you need for a great shave and nothing but that. Which is why Harry's has the highest customer satisfaction in the shaving industry. So no matter how busy things get, stay fresh with Harry's. Get your Harry's starter set today and you'll also get a free travel size body wash. Just go to harrys.com slash new heights. That's harrys.com slash new heights. All right. We got some news out today. Uh, you uh, had a little contract uh, uh, negotiate. Well, yes, I did. Can you put us in behind the scenes with that a little bit? What happened? Why um, did it happen? So my, uh, I'm not sure yet. I think it's definitely a, it's a, it's a start to a move, right? Like, you, like you're freeing up you cap so? space to be able to do something, right? You're not, I mean, unless well, they could always just, just carry it over. Kindly kindly giving me the money up front which i no. genuinely appreciate either way um but yeah my agent just hit me up and said that uh you know they want to free up some cap space so i was like i get the money now yeah all right why not that right. seems like a i'll no do brainer. that yeah and it frees up cap space for us to get better as a team i'm so, in so uh so you cannot uh verify or debunk the rumors out there surrounding obj odell, odell. Beckham Jr.? I think that's the OBJ I'm referring to. I 
want them to come true. Um, yeah, I haven't heard course. anything. Uh, I have not heard anything in the in the locker room or anything around the the facility. But um, all right, I think that uh, all right, playing a little coy with it. I yeah, get it. Something, yeah. something, something's in the air for sure. And if it means OBJ, all right now that'd be good. All right. Well, we can neither confirm nor deny, but we will speculate. Um, and I um, look forward to seeing OBJ in the Chiefs uniform. <laughs> All righty. Let's talk rivalries. You guys played the Bills, which has turned into somewhat of a rivalry of, uh, you know, uh, success. Both of you guys are really good. And, uh, you know, obviously we played the Cowboys this past week. So let's talk some more about rivalries. Yeah. First of all, is NFL or college a bigger rivalry space? <clears throat> What, where are the rivals biggest? It's college. A good question. You got it's not it. a good question. It's college. So? What are you talking about, Travis? You think so? Yeah. All right. Dude, in college, it's much more like... Uh, I'm thinking about like our a- rivalries and uh, like Miami of Ohio. I didn't really feel the rivalry. Oh, dude, I hated Miami of Ohio. Yeah, but that... All right. Silver Spoon Private School. Screw them. <laughs> I hated Miami. <laughs> well, I was not a it fan. It wasn't even a real game. I feel like we walked them every single year. Yeah, we like, were better than close. them, but I wasn't a fan. Like, listen, I don't – nothing against anybody that went to Miami, but I was not a fan of uh, the snootiness and the uh, think they're better than us mentality from the Miamians. I didn't feel that when I played them. I didn't feel them – saying that I, I remember they said they, they were saying stuff in like uh in the blogs talking and about everything. the players yeah yeah, yeah. just yeah. talking about the overall universities hmm. yeah yeah either way though the big time rivalries like the uh the sec yeah. ones where you alabama see, auburn yeah those you yeah. can't argue with that I, I i hear you on that yeah it's no question they have trophies for it travis there ain't no nfl trophy for a rivalry the tr- the, the rivalries are more about the fans and stuff like that. The players, I feel like, are not as involved in the NFL rivalries. Maybe I'm wrong. I think um, obviously they're they're it's more than a regular game, but I always felt like the rivalries in college were bigger. Maybe it's just me. Um, yeah. Yeah. Some people in the uh, Dallas Eagles game might might think a little different. I mean, it was the most watched game. Well, that's what I'm saying on the fans' perspective, it's it's still very very big. But you know, nobody poisoned a tree. At uh, <laughs> Alabama, uh, was it Auburn University? Which Auburn. one? Which one was it? I think it was Auburn. Roll Tide. Roll Let's kill tide. this two hundred year old tree. That ain't happened in the NFL. You're right. It ain't. Who has been your biggest rival in your career? Man, that's a great question. I um, I would probably have to say the Broncos. Broncos. Broncos Chiefs have always been huge in in, in my head, and it, it was probably because when I first got to the league, the Broncos were that team. Well, good, yeah. yeah, they were that That's, team. So every single yeah. week in the in the every single week we played them in the building, it was amped up. It was like, all right, we focus a little bit more. A little bit more is on the line for this one. And AFC West opponent uh, playing them twice a year. I just feel yeah. like uh, that rivalry in 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 the Raiders have always been, uh, without a doubt, the two biggest ones that I actually feel the the rivalry and uh, the history whenever we play them. Yeah. I mean, for us, I got to say Dallas, um, probably because the fan base just makes you feel it so much. And we played a lot of meaning- meaningful games against them. Yeah. Um, you know, and this is, a, this is our first win in like the last seven games. So uh, happy to finally break that trend. We had a bad run against Dallas for the last few years. So, yeah. um, you know, I think uh, outside of them, if I'm going outside the NFC East, probably go Minnesota. Again, we've had meaningful games. We had a big NFC championship game and uh, the fan bases seem to hate each other. And um, so, yeah, I go Minnesota. Yeah. Give them some love. I'm not sure if it's mutual, but I, I absolutely hate playing the Patriots. Um I yeah, feel like you get a you get a lot of fake ass Gronk stuff from the Patriots. Well, I mean that that's good shit. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I ain't mad at that. 
I'm mad at him calling or calling out my mom in the stands, you know. Oh, uh, you don't like the your mama jokes? Yeah. No, no, no. Your mama jokes are cool just when you say them to me, not my mom. Oh, you know yeah. what I mean? That's like fair. when mom mom's leaving the stadium and she's getting heckled, you know, that's just that's fucking low blows, man. Um but other than that, and mom isn't the only one that had a tough time. A lot of people say they go into New England and and just get the uh just get a bad taste in their mouth about Patriots fans. But obviously the Pats uh had Brady and, and Gronk and I mean Belichick, they were awesome for for so long and uh definitely yeah. my first couple of years in the league. And there were a lot of meaningful games that I played against them in the playoffs and um, I think that that was definitely one of the games that I was always hyped for getting, trying to get more ready for than usual. Yeah. I mean, it's the greatest dynasty probably of the modern era. Um, you know, it's impressive what the Patriots are able to do. So yeah. What about positional rivalries? Do you ever find yourself uh, having, um, I don't know, looking at other tight ends, stats, things like that. And, you know, yeah. accolades and like compete against that. I genuinely look at, what all the tight ends did in every single game, you know, I just like to see what guys are doing out here. If they had a big game, I watch it on on film and and see how he was getting his yards. But yeah, whenever I whenever I played Gronk or whenever I played Zach Ertz, whenever I play a big time tight end across the ball like a Darren Waller, um, I'm trying to outperform him 100. percent I feel like, uh, I mean, and don't get me wrong, it's not like I changed my mentality or anything. I just I want to be known as one of the best that's ever done done it. And uh, mm -hmm. what a better way to show it when two of the best that, that are in the league uh, go at it in the same game, you know? For me, I feel like the main guy that I always looked at for a while was Travis Frederick with the yeah. Cowboys. We yeah. were both in the Boys. same conference and uh, highly rated centers. And, um, I don't, yeah, you always want to be the best, right? And, you know, I had a lot of respect for him, still do. Unfortunately, his career was cut short had a really bad illness. I think it was Gillian Barr syndrome. Um, but, you know, he came back to the year after that and then retired. Um, you know, got a lot of respect for him, obviously, because we played a lot of the same opponents and he was had such a great career. Uh, I think he was a pro bowler dang near every season he played yeah. in the NFL. Yeah, he was a stud. Um, so, yeah, kind of always compared myself to him uh, and, you know, wanted to beat him. Uh, even though it's center, there's not really statistics, I guess. But um, <laughs> you got the, other, the PFF grade. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you always got that. And then, uh, you know, the other guys I think I compared myself to or like always monitored how they were doing at center were the guys that I was drafted with and the guys in particular that were drafted above me, you know, Rodney Hudson, who Rod. you played a lot of, yeah, you played a lot of right. ball with in Kansas City. Um, Stefan Wisniewski. Who's drafted nice. ahead of me and uh Whiz. in the Raiders. And ironically enough, uh a guy that like I wanted to prove I was better than uh or like I was competing with in my head, uh ended up coming and joining the Philadelphia Eagles and we ended up winning a Super Bowl together. Uh he ended and up being a guy that like made me became my teammate and made me a better player. Like we ended up helping each other. Oh yeah. And, um, smart dude. He's a very smart football brilliant. player, man. Brilliant Love. guy. I got to got um, to see him at the uh, the Eagles game I went to. The Wiz was in the house, baby. Yeah, yeah. The Wiz obviously played in uh, in Kansas KC. City and, and won a Super Bowl with you guys. With us. Can't say enough good things. He looks great, man. You talk about losing weight, man. There's yeah, no way you're doing the Stephen Wisniewski, man. You're not losing weight, dude. First of all, it's Stephen Wisniewski. Get, get I my call man him Wiz the Wiz, man. Wiz, yeah, I'm sorry, dude. <laughs> Wiz just would follow Kelsey brothers and get a uh, Super Bowls. So uh, way to go for the Wiz. <laughs> Shout out to the Wiz, man. Uh, speaking of you know, position Robbins, what about, uh, is there anybody that was like really, really good uh, early in your career? Maybe somebody that you like wanted to kind of be as good as, you know, like. Is Gronk for sure. Oh, okay. It was, there you go. I mean, he, he was the staple for, an all pro tight end, how you do it in line blocking, how you do it in passing game. Um, how you and do then on partying? top of that, how you do a party. And, <laughs> and then on top of that, how you win football games, man. He just shows up every single, every single week. And uh, obviously him and Tom were arguably the best duo uh, quarterback tight end duo of all time. Uh, me and Pat are trying to 
say something about that. But uh, we've got a long, long ways to go to try and catch up to those guys. Sure. But I was very – my early on in my career, I was very aware of uh, what Gronk was doing uh, every single Sunday. And um, not only that, but I was getting compared to him. The tall white dude wearing number 87, loves to have a good time. Um, you know, I think that uh, naturally – that comparison uh, came about the more the Patriots and Chiefs played. Um, but I, I personally, I absolutely love the way that dude just cut it loose, man. You could tell you could tell he he did not make football hard. He went out there and played the game f- with a with a good feel and just a, a high energy and a motor. And um, I genuinely, I, I I was always trying to. I don't want to say one up him every single week, but I, I was very aware of what uh, Gronk was doing over there in New England earlier on in my career for sure. Yeah, I mean, everybody was. He was yeah. probably the most unstoppable force. And at his best, I mean, that dude could do everything. Yeah. The two, know, I think it was, it was 2011 or yeah. 2012, and he mm-hmm. had the 17-touchdown uh, season yeah. with 1,300 yards. And nobody had ever seen a tight end just take a ball to the house, run through tackles, yeah. just dragging defenders from like the fifty yard line all the way into the goal, and like incredible. the goal line. It's a, it was it was unbelievable to watch, and I um got obviously so much respect for him. Was able to finally uh, enjoy some party time with the Gronkinator man, uh, Gronk's Beach out in Vegas with the Chainsmokers man. That was that was so fun. I had I, that was on my That's bucket cool. list. Yeah, trying to because cool. because obviously uh playing on the field playing against him was an honor but uh partying with him was even more of an honor with him and his with him and his family man the gronks are wild as we know of uh, course and then i then uh during uh my first super bowl it, down in san fran um we actually had a round table of me george kittle gronk and tony gonzalez and that was one of the coolest conversations i had ever been a part of to be on that stage, Super Bowl week, uh, talking to top tier, to best four of the best to ever do it. Uh, I'm sorry, three of the best to ever do it, oh, um, including yourself again. <sighs> so cocky. How do I do that every time? Either way, man, it was uh, it was such a genuine or like just an organic appreciation for each and every single one of those dudes at that table, and. Um, Hearing hearing Gronk and what he uh, saw in not only my game but George's game and Tony's game and vice versa about all those guys, man, it was just uh, it was definitely definitely cool to uh, experience that. And uh, the the time went by too fast, man. That that conversation could have lasted for days, man. Sure. But uh, they cut it they cut it short because obviously Super Bowl week uh, the schedules were pretty tight. But um, it, we got to get that round table going again, man. We might just get everybody on the show, man. Everybody come on to new heights, baby. Let's start talking some seriously. Ball. It really is fun to talk with other guys, especially at your position. I talked about Travis Frederick a little bit ago, and I still remember we were at the uh, Pro Bowl his last year, and Trav always had – he was always the guy that had, like, the, the backpack cooler with the beer in it and <laughs> drinking the beers at practice. Like, it's my kind of guy. Just a great dude. And I remember looking at him, I was like, man, is it me or is it getting harder? And he's like, it's definitely getting harder. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> That's why I got the beers. Yeah. He's like, man – I don't know what these defensive coordinators are playing more and more games. And it's a uh, man, but yeah, it's always fun to talk with another guy at your position. And whether you're talking about football, uh, you know, you know, life, you find out you got so much more in common than you really realize. So anyways, um, let's talk about the biggest rivalry, the biggest rivalry in the human existence. I'm talking about the sibling rivalry. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not going to I'm not going to lie. I didn't really feel like we had a sibling rivalry growing up, but I also think that might have been because I was the older brother um and I was just winning at everything. So what well, Let's hear it from your perspective. You, you weren't winning everything, all right? I, di- I didn't you win. You were everything. winning the majority of them, but you were not winning everything. If you won, it was because I felt bad and just wanted to let you. Win. Uh, you feel bad? When have you ever felt bad for somebody in your life? Okay, it wasn't because I felt bad. It was because I was like, okay, if I don't let him win every You're... once in a while, he won't play with me. <laughs> what? Yep. I was bringing it every single day. I'll say this. You know, obviously, you know, two-year difference for brothers is a big difference. But um, I, I feel like 
the rivalry really became apparent to me when you had finally started to hit puberty in high school when I was a senior and you were a sophomore. Uh, in particular, that one day when you finally beat me in basketball. Uh, finally? finally? You didn't even play basketball, Jason. Yeah, but like, I was Even so... when we played basketball, you yeah. weren't playing basketball. That doesn't matter. Just out there. I was winning, though, because I was <laughs> bigger and more stronger <laughs> and faster than you. That's it. Yeah, because there's no fouls on the on the playground, man. Trap. This dude was out here hacking. I didn't need hacking. to hack. I didn't need to hack before you hit puberty. I was freaking five inches taller than you. I just blocked every shot. Okay. <laughs> the only game you won at was horse because you could shoot better than me. But you the heard reality here, is, ladies and gentlemen, he just said it. I, he didn't win at everything. Uh, that's a good point. But the moment the rivalry really became a rivalry was when you hit puberty. We're out in the backyard, and you finally could actually beat me as something athletic. And you were doing this stupid, like driving the like outside hook shot. And I could not <laughs> fucking Kareem! stop it. I could not stop it. There, I, and I was getting, you had just gotten taller than me. So I could no longer just block it every time. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was furious. The hook, the hook I, so, that was my patent move down there in the post, man. You couldn't stop it, man. But it wasn't even like you a post. Like you it. weren't even like backing into it and like doing it. You were just like driving and then just I was throwing. running I was, away from you. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Finding a way, baby. <laughs> and I was furious. And so I just started to do what everybody does and pick up basketball when they're losing and you just start fouling the other guy. And you said <laughs> You said that's a foul, man. That's bull and I said, I don't see there ain't no refs out here. There's no refs. And then you got upset, you threw the basketball at me. And walked into the house, and I'm like, "Oh hell no!" And in my head, <laughs> in my head, I'm really I'm tr I'm upset because I'm having to come to the realization that you're better at basketball than me. And I go inside the house, and you're at the refrigerator, and I wheel you around, and I punch you in the face. <laughs> Way too aggressive for the situation. <laughs> That escalated quickly. Yeah, and was not I, expecting a punch in the face, ladies and gentlemen. Well, I don't. I mean, we we fought, but there weren't too many times where like it got to that level of like a punch in the face. <laughs> Keep your that fucking only composure, man. Yeah, Keep your composure. Not, all right, I've never had good composure, but yeah, punch you, and then before that, every time we got into a fight and I had hit you, you would just start crying. And it was but like, okay, Jason, I won do the not fight. Do that. I did That's not start crying. Maybe Not when we were young, moment. young. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm talking about. Every All time right. I would hit you when you were a kid, you would just cry, okay? <laughs> well, because it fucking hurt. What do you mean? You, no, it's because you're a kid. I'm not saying- You got me I'm, right here in the nose. Travis, you already know. It just Travis, immediately makes it- Can you just let me tell the story? in the nose, Travis, you start crying. I am not attacking- It's not a real cry. It's my eyes are watering. Can you be comfortable enough to let me tell a story <laughs> without feeling like I'm attacking your masculinity? I'm not saying anything. You calling me a bitch, bro? <laughs> You were a child, okay? But anyways, you would you would be upset and you'd just run away. This time I hit you, you scooped me up before I realized what was going on and slammed me on the kitchen floor. The oven popped off of its hinges. <laughs> and then we got up and we that. actually started having a fist fight. And the only thing that stopped the fight was dad <laughs> grabbing me, pulling me off of you, and you pushing me on top of him. And then our my and then dad going, oh my uh, ribs, oh uh, uh, my ribs. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh. And then we, we both sure froze. Okay. We both yeah. froze and thought, oh we shit, just we broke just, dad. Yeah. All right. Well, so that's when I realized that the civil rivalry had gotten to actually be a rivalry, and uh, now it's gone full circle. I, as opposed to me being able to beat you at everything, now you just beat me at everything. So, you know. I guess it's no longer a rivalry again. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's just getting started, baby. It's just getting started. Moving on. Sideline antics. Tom Brady uh, yelling at his old line. We've seen that before. I mean, sometimes you just got to fire the guys up, man. I've seen yeah. uh, I've seen Pat doing It's not necessarily yelling at the old line. I think it's just trying to get guys, you know, sparked up, man. Get them going. Did you see the clip? No, I didn't. Yeah, he was yelling at them boys. It wasn't just like a, it wasn't like a, come on guys, we got to do better. It was a fucking like, bro, listen, he's Tom Brady. I can't say nothing. Tom yells at me. I'm probably not going to say nothing neither, but hey, 
Playing all lines hard. And uh, if there's one thing I do not like, it is quarterbacks uh, getting into offensive linemen. Like, bro, get the fuck out of my – I am fucking doing the best I can, brother. (laughs) Get the fuck up out of my face. (laughs) I will put you in that trash can over there if you don't (laughs) shut the fuck up. (laughs) You fucking kidding me? The last thing I want is a motherfucker that can't get hit or it's called roughing the passer to come up to me and tell me how to fucking wrestle somebody every play. <laughs> get the fuck out of here. Ooh. Listen, it's Tom Brady. I get it. I'm not saying shit to Tom Brady either. Motherfucker's got a bunch of Super Bowls. Fucking God, he's earned the right to yell at his own line. Okay? I don't really <laughs> handle that type of interaction well in general. I am I am not that well. You, you've actually seen me get into it with a few coaches on the sideline um, yeah. one too many times, man. I uh, when When guys start yapping at each at me uh on, on we're a, when we're a team and you're this yeah. is how you're talking to me uh, it doesn't go well it doesn't go well for me man i uh i usually start yapping back and uh i always try and one-up it and it's the worst i hate it when i get into that mode of like oh no you're gonna do that i'm gonna one-up you and yeah. take it to the next level yeah, um, that's, and that's never that's uh, nobody wants to see that or be a part of that on the sideline yeah. man that's that's toxic shouldn't do that 100 um, percent um one of my favorite NFL films moments of all time, Jeff Saturday and the Sheriff, going at it on the sidelines in but Indianapolis. That one was a normal one. That was Dude, a that was a back and forth. But it was oh, I love it though, man. I love it. You could just tell those dudes had a great relationship, and they were just exactly though. Man. That's why that one was awesome because you could feel the respect, even in the argument. Mm-hmm. Like Payne's like, that's bullshit, Jeff. And he's like, well, we gotta run the ball. And it's like, dude, that's not how you argue when you when you're mad at somebody. This is like, I feel like you guys are just arguing to get the team going. Like this, <laughs> this is like there's too much respect here to have a legitimate argument. So Yeah, there's just a lot of frustration, so we yeah. gotta get it out somehow. Yeah. So, but I don't know, you know. I think um Yeah, I mean, listen, arguments are gonna happen. Uh I don't I already talked shit on it. I can't I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> no, I hear you. The trade deadline is approaching. I think that's uh that may be, you know, why the Chiefs opened up some cap space. Yeah, I think that's probably fair to you say. Know? Yeah. Um so. it's always fun to see who's uh what moves are gonna be made at the last second, last stitch efforts to change your team. Our two thousand seventeen year we made a trade for Jay Ajay. Um, Ooh, he was ended yeah, up being a huge big part. addition. Yeah. yeah, huge part of the team and, and the energy guy, swag champ. Yep. You get those guys to just boost the swagger of the team, bring yep. a whole new energy into the building. Yep. Uh, last year we had one with uh, Melvin Ingram. Yeah, my a swag champ, a dude that's just a great dude, just a great, and on top of that, great football player, smart football player, athletic. Uh, can just go out there and make plays absolutely boosted our defense when we the 2019 year that we won it um Suggs Terrell Suggs we yeah. we landed Terrell Suggs late in the season immediate game changer absolutely you know a veteran who's won before comes in uh just kind of solidifies that that defensive pass rush and just being accountable um and another being swag champ man just another swag champ, man. I forgot Terrell Suggs played for you guys. Yeah, trade deadline. Have you um, have you ever felt like I don't know, man? Maybe I'm uh, maybe I might get traded here. Have you ever felt like that when the uh, the deadline's approaching, or uh, not when the deadline's approach? I've never felt like that in the middle of the year. I mean, there was uh, I had a down year in the middle of my career where there were a lot of uh, rumors circulating, and you can't help but notice that. And and people were talking talking about the saints were interested in a trade and uh, you know, Ravens were talking about things and you know, who knows what's real. I do think it's, you can kind of tell when it's fake, when it's like for a really good player and you're like, I'm not that valuable. <laughs> 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 this is clearly fishing on behalf of the Eagles to try and make this trade happen. <laughs> like there's no chance they're trading that guy for me. I just played terrible. So they're probably not going to do that. No, I, good. uh, yeah, I don't know of any really good you know, trade deadline stuff for me. Uh, what about you? Do you ever? I, um, you, is there any rumors? No, no. I um, I've never, I've never felt 
like it. Um, I honestly, I can't even fathom playing for another team, man. That'd be wild. You just said like the Ravens and yeah. Saints. I tried to imagine you in a Ravens or Saints jersey. Yeah, thankfully, it didn't happen because we won the Super Bowl the next season. <clears throat> that would have been a go. rough. Uh, that would have been a much different career for me. But uh, luckily, the Eagles uh, decided to uh, uh, keep me for at least one more year, and it ended up being the best year of my career. But um, yeah, I feel like uh, I. You just got to put trust in the front office. You can't think about any of that stuff. Well, yeah, you that's know your, what I mean, you, you can't worry about. Tr- you can't. You can't, you're going to notice that stuff, but at the end of the day, the only thing you can focus on is what you can control, right? Yeah. And that's what you do on the field, how you prepare, how you play. All that other stuff ends up sorting itself out. New Heights stamp of the week. Who's yeah. taking their game to New Heights, baby? We're gonna do a little bit different this week because. Uh, you know, there were two uh, former Bearcats had big weeks this last week. Them Bearcats, and, baby. I think, I think it's about time we've announced the Bearcats uh, coming to New Heights. Obviously, they've been really good in college football. They're the first non-Power uh, 5 conference team to enter the college playoffs last year. Uh, and it was with a team that had a lot of guys for uh, that played a lot of ball with each other. And now a lot of those guys have entered the NFL, and two of them in particular this last week had unbelievable games. Great games. Um, I guess I'll go with my man Alec Pierce uh, up in Indianapolis, the receiver. Just shows up, man. He had a great game against us, too. Not a lot of stats, but had a bunch of big-time catches against us late in the game. We saw him make plays for years at the University of Cincinnati, and oh, yeah. then all of a sudden, when their team needs it most, Boom. Big game-winning touchdown. 32-yard bomb uh, on a go ball. Up top, Pierce. He's been going up top for years, man. Desmond Desmond Ritter used to just chuck it up to him, yep. and he used to go and get it, man. Well, uh, shout out to Alec Pierce taking it to new heights in the NFL. Way to go, my man. I'm, ta- I'm taking my guy Sauce Gardner. Of course. Big Uno over there in the corner, obviously first round draft pick. When you watch him play, he is a crazy athlete. Long, quick, in terms of like can play physical, can keep can keep his hands on you and move his feet at the same time. When you get a corner with those long, long arms and just uh can play with anticipation, man, it's fun to watch. And uh he obviously he brings the juice, has the chain, is that boy that, that man is yeah. iced out everywhere he, got, he goes. He got the swag for sure. Dude, That's I saw him in- for you. I saw him in person when he took a visit to to Philadelphia before the draft and everything, and I was just shocked at how his size. That's what I'm saying. I'm like, dude, man. this is a cornerback. <laughs> <laughs> this man is as tall as me with his and his arms are just like like I uh, like long. You know he what is. I mean? Like this dude is. I don't know what his wingspan is, but it's big. Like he's got the measurables for it, man. Yeah, like you. If, if you were if you were gonna like concoct a cornerback in like a laboratory. It'd be Sauce Gardner, 100%. and on top of it, if you were to like, what's the dopest ass nickname we can give a quarterback? It'd be Sauce Gardner. Like, are you kidding me? This dude is like, he's got so much swag; it's ridiculous. So, I am Absolutely such a huge it, fan. Yeah, Sauce, dude. congrats on taking your game to new heights, man. Keep keep balling, brother. Keep, oh, he will keep he balling, will. man. All right, let's look ahead. All right, next week we got uh, we got Chiefs at the Niners. You guys looking to bounce back from this past week's loss to the Bills. Another tough opponent. Yeah. You know, Super Niners Bowl are playing rematch, really, man. really good football right now. Obviously, you guys have history. Um, you know, other than winning uh, Super Bowl uh, 54, uh, what is your most fond memory of that day? <sighs> man, um, my most fond memory? I would say uh, – <laughs> as funny as it is, we were on the comeback, uh, and I got my touchdown. And I I remember being so excited that we finally got the momentum going. We got on the board, and I threw my touchdown at my Super Bowl touchdown ball on the ground. Like this means nothing. And as yeah. I'm running to the sideline, like I should probably keep that. <laughs> <laughs> Man. So, yeah. Luckily enough, the uh, equipment managers put it in a. Uh, in a bag for me and then gave it to me after the game. And I gave that to our wonderful Aunt Judy because she wasn't able to make the game. So I, I, I made sure I got her the ball. Aunt Judy's uh, got your Super Bowl 54 touchdown. Yes, ball? she does. Yes, she does. Gosh, you're awesome. Way to go. <laughs> I had, I had to make sure I, what I brought a, a piece of the game, the game back Gosh. to her. Aunt Judy's uh, the best. Another, another really, uh, 
dope experience of the entire Super Bowl was the uh, it was the first time The Rock did the intros. Now oh, he's cool. it seems like he does the intros at a lot of he different did. sporting events. Um, yeah. We pre-recorded this one. I, I, I know last year he did it on the field live. And when I tell you that dude is a machine, like what do you does mean? no hiccups, no like no bad lines. Like he just rolls take after take because he's doing he's he's getting set up and uh he's doing intros for every single guy. And when I go up there, I'm like, man, it's Dwayne Johnson, man. This dude's the rock, man. The eyebrow, the people's elbow. I used to, I love I grew up on WWF and WWE man I loved yeah. it growing up him and Stone Cold were obviously electric but The Rock is doing the intros and I just thought it was the coolest thing ever man and I I went up to him shook his hand and when I hit his hand <laughs> it was like I hit a rock dude that dude is so yoked yeah like shoulders hand bro just it's like a it's like a boulder man. Well, it's good like, to know I he's got it. strong hands because I feel like a lot of times the uh, like bodybuilder muscle bone guys actually have like really tiny forearms and like weak hands. Have you ever noticed that? <laughs> I think because they do like a lot of machine work. They do like the machines, so they're never working on their grip strength. I feel like a lot of those guys got like the Burger King hands where it's like, you know, <laughs> I'm serious. Got these big ass shoulders, but they can't fucking hold on to, you know, a 40 pound medicine ball. Like, what? <laughs> just, just happy to know he's got good hand strength that's good that's good stuff man that dude is dense you can tell man that dude is solid all right solid shout got out a to little, Dwayne, man. Got a little that, was, that was definitely that was definitely an experience to remember though man i was just i was amazed sure. i think it was just the stardom uh that he has that he that he, when he walks into a room everyone you know everyone knows that the rock is in the room I and, saw the uh, rock it was a cool uh, he, experience. He lifted at the Eagles facilities one time. And like when he walked into the weight room, I was like, oh, yeah, he's kind of big. And then after he was done lifting, I was like, oh, no, this motherfucker's huge. <laughs> like once you saw him like fully jacked from lifting. Swole. Yeah, I was like, dude, this is another level. Uh, he I just keeps getting bigger too, man. It's impressive. I, never, I don't know. I wasn't, the, I feel like I would be more, I mean, I was starstruck when I saw the rock. But for me, the number one guy I would be starstruck from that era of wrestling. Hands down, Stone Cold Steve Austin. It ain't even close. Texas Rattlesnake, man. Yeah, bro. 316, come on now. Hey, it's Kelsey uh, versus uh, Kittle. National tight end day. My guy, G. Kittle. Got so much respect for him, man. He's got the new helmet, man. You see that thing? He's got, like, the Power Ranger helmet. Him and Bosa, man. They got, uh, they're in, like, the tech capital of the of the world over there in uh yeah, silicon valley silicon valley and um it looks like they're you know i feel like the helmet that they're wearing makes them look even more impressive than they already are like more athletic i'm not gonna lie i have not noticed this helmet so i cannot comment um, it's interesting it's hopefully cool. it's hopefully it's working i think it's sweet i haven't seen them in our <laughs> i haven't seen those come through it's the kansas city yet. Kansas City locker room? Nah, haven't seen no. those ones yet. Um, but what, uh, uh, National who, Tight End Day, baby. Who makes it National, National Tight, Tight End, end Day. Day? Who makes uh, it National Tight End Day? Uh, I'm pretty sure Kittle. Kittle, the entire Kittle family, they're like the tight end you runners. Like they, 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 they push it. They're unbelievable. When in Nashville, they basically host every single tight end in the league. Um, his father, uh, Mr. Kittle, absolutely crushes it. Uh, when he when he, when they host everybody, um, kind of leads the tight end. You whenever we're out there, obviously, uh, Greg Olson and Kittle came to me, uh, uh to try and start this uh, tight end. You and um, I think National Tight End Day just happened to be like the. It started off in October, um, and now I think it's whenever uh, me and George play. I'm not gonna lie, I do not do any of the days. You I'm don't do National Center Day. I don't do national anything day unless it's a holiday. You don't just get to what make cheesesteak day. Hey, it's corn. It's it's Wednesday corn cornhole day. Like, what are we talking about here? It's so everything has got a day now. I can't keep track of all so that's this. A, that's how every hey, single holiday in America started. What do you mean? It, no, it's not. What do you mean? Father's Day, F- bro. We're gonna compare Father's Day to tight end day. We're gonna, what are you talking about? There's What's the difference. Martin Luther King Day. It's the the birth 
birthday or right yeah birthday right, of like the, the, the greatest civil rights leader in the history of the world okay yeah i'll go well celebrate played. that one i'll go celebrate fourth of july the birthday of america yeah that's a damn good holiday yeah what is going on everybody's just making up holidays and days and like hey it's national puppy day post your picture of your favorite puppy fuck off i ain't participating <laughs> in your made up fucking day it's fucking stupid I'm not participating in some bullshit. I, post, Just, I posted yeah. you on National Sibling Day. I don't participate in none of that garbage. <laughs> and I'm not participating in National Tight End Day. The fuck out of here. <laughs> hey, we got a day to celebrate all the struggles that tight ends have been through. Yeah, come today, on, bro. Today is October 18th, National Cupcake Day. Don't forget to get your cupcakes. <laughs> No beard day. National no beard day. Yeah, no I'll participate in that one. Yeah, I might have to go stash. Might have to go stash. Next time you guys see me, I might have a stash. National leggings day. Don't forget to throw those leggings on. I'm not going to lie. The pants that you wore to the game were kind of, they were a little tight. They were a little yeah, tight. Yeah, that was a company. Are you, are, you, are you washing them a little too much? I'm not going to lie. They keeping were. The, they, keeping the dry. I'm not going to lie. They were them? jiggings. They were jiggings. They were. You they were some... sweat sweatpant jeans. Um, like I said, I dress for comfort, baby. I'm not trying to impress nobody. <laughs> huh? I'm celebrating National Comfort Day every day. <laughs> put it on the yeah. put it on the schedule, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. Put it on the schedule. Every day, National Comfort Day. <laughs> Celebrate. Have yourself a ball. Don't wear anything over a hundred dollars. It'll be it'll be the best decision you ever made. Well, there are some things that are expensive that are comfy. That hoodie you wear the last year, whatever it was, you know exactly Dude, what hoodie I'm talking about. I, it's in yes, I gave you a gift bag and it's at Dad's house. I told Dad to give it to you. It's full of comfy sweaters that are over a hundred dollars. Travis, thank you so much. I love comfy sweaters. <laughs> Dad might have stole them. He might. Is it just... National Sweater Day yet? Maybe I'll get it on National Sweater Day. <laughs> there you go. It's coming up, baby. Eagles by week. What do you What do you got planned, brother? Uh, nothing. I mean. Honestly, um, might go to Cleveland for a hot second, but uh, I'm going to hang out with the fam. You know, we don't get the – between, you know, football, the podcast, the foundation launching, um, you know, I feel like I really haven't had a lot of time to sit with my girls. Uh, you know, we got a lot of stuff going on in Philly right now with the sports teams. Mm -hmm. So it's a good time to be in Philly. So okay. I'm going to enjoy Maybe it. Catch spend some, some October baseball. Yeah, I'm going to enjoy it, spend some time with the girls. Maybe go down to the beach one last time before it gets too cold to do that. Family time is always where I go when it when it comes to bye weeks. I try and get out to see you and uh, and those yeah. girls. And obviously, mom and dad are always uh, circling that game, knowing that I'm going to try and make it so we get everybody under the same roof. I never like to plan it, though, because you never know how your body's feeling. You might get banged up the, the week going into it. And you just, you got to be in the training yeah. room and get right and get your body, you exactly. know. Exactly. I guess that is the other reason. The so other I, reason I'm not going to any place is because my ankle sprained. I need to get treatment on it. I forgot about that. So, yeah. Yeah. I, I, ne I never try and plan anything on my bye week um, for those reasons specifically. But uh, obviously, man, to get that, to get that, I think if the, if the, the league does go to another game, I think having two buys is the way to go, man. Oh, I'd be for two buys right now. Are you kidding me? Yeah, I'm yeah, with it's you. you know especially for you know for us this year, we're getting our buy right now after week six, and our Thursday game is in two weeks after that. So we're gonna have nine games straight of you know just reg. I mean, of NFL yeah. football, it's a lot. It's gonna be a grind to finish those, that season off, and um, I would Obviously. be all in favor of two bye weeks. Yeah. Um, everyone, everyone should get one late, man. Yeah, whether it's a bye week or a Thursday game, they should they should really try to make sure that they space that out, I feel like. And maybe yeah. they do try to, but. Um, I know that uh, we had the first Thursday night game, and our bye week is the earliest that it's been in probably five, six years. Um, usually. Yeah, your your bye week's we, next week, right? Yeah, we got it right after. So we got like 10 games back to back to back to back. So you guys uh, don't have another. Th I think you guys had two Thursday games for some reason. Mm-hmm. No, no, just that one, just the one yeah. against the Chargers that kick it off. I, I don't. I'm not a huge fan of the Saturday games, man. The late in the season Saturday games are just uh, kicking the balls, man. Playing on Saturdays is weird. I, I just, just 
The NFL is meant for Sundays. And Mondays. And, and Thursdays. Thursdays when you get the weekend off. <laughs> Sooner or later, it'll be on Friday. Yeah, and I guess Amazon just announced uh, it's official. They are going on Friday. Next next Black Friday Stop. next year. Yeah. Trav, Stop. NFL- when, do they, when do they just space it out like uh, like soccer? Where it's just like you play every like 10 to 15 days, like you just, you'll play on like a random Tuesday, a Wednesday, like a week and a half, two weeks apart. I don't know. I don't think it really makes sense for the NFL model, but they're finding a way to get you on every single day. It looks like. Yeah. I'm okay with a black Friday game. I mean, I like, I, we've talked about this before. I like holiday games, um, but I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how it works out. We shall see. What what do you think the ideal buy is? Got to be late, right? Or you um, want to ride the middle? I just think the ideal situation is you have your Thursday and your bye week spaced yeah. out so that you're getting one of those early and one of them late. Uh, if I had my choice, I would probably prefer a late buy to an early buy because I feel like if the your more your body is under more uh, wear and tear later in the season, obviously. But um, you know. It's, I've had all of them any which way you can make it. Like this year we got an early buy and it's kind of coming at a nice time, especially for O-line because I think four out of our five guys, actually from this last game, every starter of every one of our five guys has been out with an injury at some point. So, you know, really? it's, Man, yeah, that's, yeah. I've I mean, sprained I, my ankle. I, Isaac Samala has a sprained ankle. Landon Dickerson has something going on with his leg. Jordan Malata screwed up his shoulder and then Lane had to exit last game with a concussion. So it's a, uh, it's a good bye week for the Philadelphia. This guy's reading the injury report. Um, well, it's public knowledge. So I don't think it's I'm actually really... that's, and to, to be honest, that's kudos to you guys keeping it together because getting Dude. banged up like that. I mean, new guys got to come in and, and step up to the plate. You know for what sure. I mean? I mean, those guys have also played through a lot of it uh, with, I think uh, Jordan was the only one that's missed like a game. Uh, I love so that dude, man. Oh, he's the best. <laughs> he's awesome. You don't know what you're, you're getting yourself about a personality. into. You don't I mean, know what you're getting yourself into, man. I'm telling you that some some people uh, they just got that it fact. You talk about the Rock. This dude could be the Rock down the line. I'm telling you, he is. He has got that type of personality. One hundred. He is awesome. All righty. Well, that about wraps up the seventh episode of New Heights. Man, seven Woo! episodes. Seven in, man. These yeah. good times are flying, baby. Well, you can still get new episodes every Wednesday during the season. Watch and subscribe on YouTube to the New Heights channel and listen and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, New Heights is a Jukes original presented by Wave Sports and Entertainment. Uh, make sure you follow us on the social media platforms at New Heights Show for fun clips throughout the week. And uh, thanks to our production crew, as always, setting us up for success, man. You guys are the best. Making it easy. No doubt. Don't forget to tune in next week, baby. Peace. Peace.